While we've grown out weep nitty bong, I'm Engineer Hoist. Welcome to the weekly Transformers Earth Wars and other Transformers news show here on my uh, uh, channel. I really got to come up with the title for that. If you guys get any title uh, title suggestions, go ahead, throw them in the chat or in the description if you're watching on the replay. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely want to start talking more about the toys and we're going to do that tonight and uh, you might have an idea what we're going to talk about there. Uh, but there's more than just the chaos bringer in the room to talk about. Uh, so first thing, first, let's go over the agenda here. First off, we're going to do some shout outs. Then we're going to talk about Transformers Earth Wars news. We'll crack a few crystals. I got a four star crystal plus those uh, combiner crystals to go see which duplicates I get. Then we're going to talk about a lot of very cool toy news that came out over the past few days, including some even just today. And we'll probably end up end the show off with a very large unboxing. Got a big old package in the mail. I'm going to crack that open and go see what we got. Gus Britt in the stream says he pulled a four-star hotspot. Hey, that was mine, dude. All right, so we've got Jameis Vega in the house. John Stewart, Grand Galvatron, as always. Destroyer Fire Rage, as always. Texatron. Uh, Eduardo, Arrow, NSX Gaming, Sharksy, Woody, Demise Break, Damon Swinky, Big D, what's up guys, Peter Atwood checking in after a long time, Dojack, uh, it says he's finally able to grab, uh, check in with the live stream, and somewhere out there in the shadows lurking is probably Soldier, one of our non-toxic gamers, he said he's... He tends to watch uh, and just uh, doesn't chat. That's all cool. I do plenty of lurking in live streams and don't even, don't even chat. So it's it's all good. All right, okay, so um, okay, Woodbacons in the stream. Michael uh, Chanciolo, uh, maybe Voltron X. Okay, let's get to, over to the Transformers Earth Wars news, shall we? This weekend's event is called Backdoor Exploit. And uh, get your minds out of the gutter. That's actually uh, referring to some sort of a software uh, glitch that uh, hackers or whatever can uh, take advantage of in software or whatever. That's what that um, is referring to. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so that's the name of the event. And this weekend's event, you guys, if you've been playing a while, you know what's coming. Uh, if you're new to the game, we're going to tell you what it's all about. This weekend, you can win up to 3,000 Prime Core Shards, which you can collect to earn to basic claim. That's the word I was looking for, a Prime Core Power Boost that you can put on one of your bots, and they do have those unique abilities. Some of them are really great, and at least one of them is kind of junk, especially if you're new to the game and don't have a combiner you guys know i'm all talking about nexus grand galvatron knows what i'm talking about uh but in addition to those prime core shards you could win 30 toolboxes and we'll talk about what's in those and up to 30,000 spark this is an individual event which means you do not have to be in an alliance to participate in this event there are 30 prestiges it starts and ends at the usual time friday through sunday evening monday morning depending on your time zone and Super XP this weekend. Originally, we usually get triple XP, but this weekend they're giving us super XP, and that is up to four times the normal XP you get in a normal battle up in the higher zones, but it's definitely more than triple on any zone that you go into. Big D says he's going to get his 11th prime core. That means you're going to be done, dude. That, uh, because, oh wait, no, we've got 12 out now, don't we? So you're almost done. Yeah, I'm a little behind. I've, I've been mostly taking these individual events off and have not completed them, so I'm definitely way behind, although I think I'll be getting a Prime Core. We'll check that a little bit when we get to the game. Uh, how do you participate in the event? Just like in every event, you have to be Headquarters Level 4. Whether you're in Alliance or not, you have to be Headquarters Level 4, and if you're just starting out, you can get to Headquarters Level 4 pretty quick if you pretty much just follow along in the tutorials. Um, then you'll see that big yellow event button. That, what, that, what's down there right now is the raids if you're in an alliance. And then you select your appropriate battle zone, win, get your battle points, and collect your prizes. The battle zones, as they usually are in one of these prime core 
shard events are the flat battle zones. That means you can win up to 10 battle points in any zone. So whether you're battling in the very difficult zone 14 or the super easy zone 1, you can win the same amount of points. Which And combined with the fact that it's super XP, guys... Go power level your bots. Take a half a team. Don't put. Don't fill up your shuttle. Take half of them and go into a lower zone. You'll still get the same amount of points as long as you do the appropriate number of battles. You still got going to get the same distance in the event, uh, but you'll get more XP per bot. So there's plenty of videos out there on how to power level. Go check them out and do it. This weekend is the perfect time. And on top of that, if you've got a particular bot that you're trying to level, maybe it's one of those three-star combiner bots from last weekend, slap a XP core on them. You can buy them with Shanix in the Shanix store from the raids if you happen to have some. Maybe you've got some from an event or whatever. This would be an excellent weekend to be using one of those XP cores. All right. Totalizer prizes. Again, we, this is familiar. I didn't have to change hardly any of these slides except like the dates from the last time we had one of these events. Uh, so you can win up to 100 Prime Core Shards in each um, Prestige, uh, one Toolbox, and a Thousand Spark. This is, this is the prizes per Prestige. About every 10 battle points, you're going to win a prize. And you, it takes roughly six battles somewhere between five and six battles on average to complete a prestige so because I, I if you're trying to calculate calculate how many battles it takes it's best to use nine as an average because most of your battles you're gonna win nine points sometimes you'll win ten sometimes you win eight but on average it's about nine okay so in those toolboxes you can win one of these prizes 500 premium shards, 104 star shards, 153 star shards, or you can win a white, a blue, a red, or a purple Kremzeek! <laughs> now, of course, the white Kremzeek is very similar to the cliff jumper kickback type of ability where it does the glass gas sort of effect where it, re it uh, increases, I can't remember if it increases the damage or reduces the defense of the defense. But anyway, it causes more damage from a normal attack. doesn't do any damage itself, but causes more damage to be caused on the defenses that that Kremzeek is on. The blue Kremzeek acts just like an EMP where it stuns whatever defense that little Kremzeek is on. The red Kremzeek just simply causes damage. And the purple Kremzeek is like a Perceptor or Cosmos hack or bombshell or mind wipe if you're a decepticon and it will turn that defense against its own other defenses there so they basically have it work against you those purple crimson are super useful in the raids on the especially on those big thunder towers that's why i love to use them all right now that the event information is out of the way we've also got to talk about the new bots that are coming we've got a little sneak peek at them last week where they just kind of did the little paint over well we've got the official images you saw them on the thumbnail if you happen to see that and uh, we also they weren't planning on giving us the special abilities this week but they did so we could talk about their special abilities and see that so the, we as we saw before one is a massive maximal and the other a predacon Rhinox and Tarantulas are joining the Earth Wars at the end of the current saga. Rhinox, his bio states that he is solid, dependable. Rhinox is proof perfect that still waters run deep. He's strong, stalwart, and decisive in a crisis, but for all his power and dependability, it's his less apparent tech-savvy qualities and brilliant mind over brute force that win the day in the long run. With an intellect that borders on the mystical sometimes, thinking outside the box is second nature. That's not to say, though, that Rhinox's twin chain guns of doom and runaway headlong charges at enemy lines don't make him indispensable either. But his analytical and tactical brain, combined with a strong moral compass, are his standout qualities. So, yeah, very cool, and he looks really good. And uh, we took a look at him uh, last week. I've actually since transformed him back into Rhino mode. So this is the Generations Rhinox. He stands up way better in this mode than he does in his robot mode because I never got around to fixing those super loose knees. 
Okay, so his ability is called the Life Stealing Charge. Now, this is actually pretty cool. We haven't seen this before. He rushes into combat, imprisoning defenses on his path for seven seconds and slowing and slows them down. The vines drain some health every second and heals the nearby allies by a percentage of the building's damage value every second. So that's pretty cool. He slow, slows them down and steals their health and heals your buddies. That is so cool. Uh, I really hoping to see some vines just come up out of the ground. Uh, if they can pull that off, man, that is going to be so cool to see. All right. Next up is Tarantulas. This guy is the Predacon. He, if you're playing as a Decepticon, this is the guy you're going to be trying to get. Scheming, duplicitous, and utterly self-serving. The goals Tarantula strives to achieve often well, maybe always put him at odds with the Predacon leadership. Something of a mad scientist, Tarantulas pushes the boundaries of what's possible, however morally abhorrent, to new and mind-boggling limits. He's never happier than when he's bending and twisting what's possible into what's perversely impossible. Nothing is off-limits when it comes to breaking new ground or expanding Tarantulas's personal power base. Though ostensibly an agent of the Tripredicus Council, the only three individuals that actually demand Tarantulas' loyalty are me, myself, and I. Very cool, very cool. And he has the same life-stealing charge, except instead of vines, he's got webs, basically. So yes, rush into combat, imprisoning defenses on his path for seven seconds and slowing them down. The web drains some health every second and heals nearby allies by a percentage of the building's damage value every second. So it's just like seeing the vines, if we can see some webs coming from this guy out of the ground or just from him or whatever... Uh, that would be really cool if they can get that kind of an animation in there. And yes, this ability just looks really cool. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't put it on any slide, but it was confirmed that their class is actually a special class. Uh, Denny's Creek is say probably a warrior class. Uh, they're they're going to be special class. However, it does sound like they likely to be melee bots, which are similar to the warrior class. But although technically they're uh, specials. Kind of like Optimus Prime, he's basically a warrior, but he's special class, so you can't use those warrior class uh, power cores on him. Uh, although I kind of wish you could. Uh, that, that's one of the drawbacks of the special class, is I kind of wish you could use the power cores for that type of attack. Like the melee bots can use warrior class, the gunner specials can use gunner class. Uh, but a, a, as of now, you cannot, but hopefully they will at some point. Sharksy, thank you for the uh, congrats on the 6,000 subs. Yeah, we got that a uh, little, little bit ago, I think uh, last week sometime. Um, yeah, very cool. And, uh, yep, last, last thing about Transformers Earth Wars is that there's no stream tomorrow. Normally we uh, talk about how you can go find them on the Transformers Earth Wars YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook channels to watch the streams. And you can certainly go to any of those places and watch past streams and see what they talked about. Uh, but nothing this week. They do it every two weeks. And this is their off week next week on July 25th at 4 p.m. Universal Time, which is about 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so you guys can try to do a little bit of the math on that. You can check out their live stream next week on Transformers Earth Wars social medias. Uh, Oktar, good to see you, man. No worries. We're just finishing up with the Transformers Earth Wars news. And we'll do uh, one last thing before we head over to the game. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, I was a guest on the sit rep with Patriot Prime over on the Patriot Prime Reviews channel. And, uh, you know, I don't think I put a link in the description, but it'll be there when we get done in the stream. Um, last week I was saying get over there because it premiered on Friday evening at 10 p.m. and since it has now premiered it is live to watch at any time that you want uh, there will be a link in the description unfortunately it's not there right now but you wouldn't be going there right now anyway because you're gonna stick around and keep watching the stream anyway so I'll get that up right after the stream is done 
All right, so let's go ahead and get over to the game. We'll do a little bit of crystal cracking. I don't have a whole lot. Um, I did want to actually talk about one of the new things that they're doing for bundles, if you happen to be spending, is I do like what they're doing here. Is Now what they're doing is they can see which bots you don't have. Like, for example, I don't have a four-star sandstorm, and here is a bundle of sandstorm crystals. Now, obviously, they're just like any of the other character-specific crystals where you just have a simple, simply have a higher chance of getting Sandstorm, but you can still pull any bot. Um, I'm hoping to find a hotspot. If one of these shows up with hotspot crystals in them, I'm going to get one, and there will be a video on it, and hopefully there will be a success. So far, I've only seen Windblade and Sandstorm come through, and um, but, I mean, they may, he may have shown up but I missed them because they do kind of show up when you're not playing and then stuff like that. So I, they may have shown up and I just missed them. But I'm going to keep my eye out on on um, for Hotspot because we are searching for Hotspot. And yeah, Grand Galvatron, uh, for me, it's $99.99 because I have purchased some high dollar bundles in the past. And the more you purchase higher dollar bundles, you tend to be given those if, if you were if you haven't haven't ever purchased a, a hundred dollar bundle they may not offer you the hundred dollar they may offer you a 40 or a 20 or something like that uh closer to what you've done although you would obviously get fewer crystals um okay so before we go over there we've got a four star crystal i want to go ahead and claim oh look at that we're pretty close to a three star crystal but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and grab that four star crystal before we get over there and crack some of these what about sideswipe well i have the i have all of the versions of sideswipe so he wouldn't show up or actually if it were a sideswipe bundle in the rotation it would just show up as like an architect bundle that just has like energon and alloy in it which i obviously would not um purchase all right so i do have four decepticon premium crystals which i used from shards during last weekend's event we completed seven of the prestigious, so I've got seven of these three-star aerial bot crystals, and they're all guaranteed to be duplicates because I do have them, but let's go see who we can get out of them. Would we build a new combiner if we were to get them? Like, are we going to see all six of the aerial bots? But before we do that, let's get these Decepticon pr premium crystals done. We've got Shockwave. And we've got a two-star, who's that, Center Twin. Very cool. Oh, is it only going to be Combiner Spark, Destroyer, Fire Rage? That doesn't even show you a bot. Well, if that's the case, then I probably shouldn't, couldn't, did, <laughs> didn't need to hold on to them to waste everybody's time. But uh, we'll go see. And the last Decepticon Premium Crystal gives us a Swindle. And it looks like we did actually complete that three-star crystal over there. And we'll use that on the Decepticon side. We'll come back over here. We'll tap that stick with the Decepticons for a little bit. There's a duplicate three-star Ripper Snapper. Okay. And so these... Oh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't even tell you if you get them. You just straight get the Combiner Spark. Well, that's a little disappointing. I was hoping to at least see, see who it would have shown up with before it gave me the Combiner Spark. But that's okay. I'm still I'm happy with the combiner spark at least. And okay, so there we go. Wasn't that exciting? No, all, all this time I could have just done that. All right. Well, still we've got a four star crystal to crack over here. So hoping for hot spot. Hoping for hot spot. It's not hot spot. It's RC. Gloria Ramirez joining the stream. Welcome, and yes, Unicron is in the thumbnail. It's not Transformers Earth Wars related. I was, you know, I was worried that that might come across that Unicron is not coming to Transformers Earth Wars. But if you haven't heard, there is definitely a toy coming out of Unicron, and we're going to talk about that. What is with all of that, Tran Augustine? I think you've got a stuck key on your keyboard. <laughs> Okay, look, we've got a story for Sinner Twin. Hmm, was hoping you lot could show me around, you know, where I could find a little light carnage. Stick with us, Sinner Twin. We'll introduce you to all the worst places to go. Yeah, we don't call ourselves Terracons for nothing. 
Where we roam even extremes in excesses fear to tread. Thanks, Cutthroat, you and Ripper Snapper sure know how to make a psychotic sadist feel at home. You seem alright, but if you turn out to be inferior in any way, I'll cry havoc on your aft. <laughs> Ignore Ripper Snapper, got a bit of an inferiority complex, makes him mad all the time. No, no, it's fine. If I don't get enough seek and destroy type action, I tend to get a little cabin fevery and rippy myself. Take it out on whoever's nearest. Don't mean nothing by it. I think we'll rub along just fine. Kindred spirits and all that. Shared interests. But I was thinking. Which for someone who's elevated mindless violence to an art form is saying a lot. I was thinking we might get even more, um, like-minded. Oh, how so? Tell me, hunger. Well, there's this thing called the Enigma of Combination. Ooh. Well, it's not really a surprise. We knew Abominus was coming. Because we've got Blot in the game for the Decepticons. Hasn't quite made it over into the normal premium crystals for us Autobots to get. But, uh, yeah, definitely um, Abominus and, and this Defense are coming. Now, for anybody who's wondering, I know there's a lot of people out there wondering when are Abominus and Defense Ore going to be coming because we did finally get Rook and Blot in the game. Well, I did a little bit of research recently and found that the last time we built the combiner, as in the combiner pieces were not all in the game, was Menasaur. We were waiting for Motormaster. So when we finally got Motormaster last year, it was three and a half months from the time Motormaster was released before we got Victorion and Menasaur. So, since it's been a couple weeks since we just got Rook and Blot, we could be looking at a good two or three months before we see Defense Ore and Abominus. Gives us plenty of time to speculate and talk about them, uh, but I wouldn't be holding your breath looking for them to come. We've got, obviously, Rhinox and Tarantulas coming uh, within a couple of weeks, and probably another bot after them, before we probably before we get abominus and defense or that's my guess uh, nothing's been revealed but that's that's my thinking there oh man so what do you guys think about all that rhinox and tarantulas and their ability they're going to rush into battle they're going to spring up vines or sling webs and uh, slow down defenses stealing the health and giving it to their nearby allies as special class bots, honestly, I think they're actually, I think that's a pretty cool ability. We'll, we'll see what how it goes in action. Let's see. Big Bronze Rim, good to see you, man. Uh, well, looks like you m missed out on the Transformers Earth Wars news, but we're going to be talking about some toy news here here pretty soon. So uh, stick around. Plus, we got an unboxing to, to get to. Um, yeah, Grand Galvatron says, yeah, and plenty of time to attain then as Blot and uh, Rook are not available to come out for regular players. Exactly. That's one of the reasons why I think they delayed the Metasaur, and that's why I think they're going to delay Abominus and Defensor and not come out directly right after those other guys were, were uh, out. Because as of now, only 100 alliances have from each... Uh, actually, no, just 100 alliances total have those bots at a level that could even form a Combiner. So I think they're going to wait till they're out in bundles. Uh, and they'll probably actually release them into the normal premium free slash free crystals to, f to give everybody a chance to get them uh, before they actually uh, bring out those combiners. In fact, I think they brought Sludge and Snarl into the regular rotation uh, sooner than normal just so they could bring out uh, Volcanicus. So. All right, so let's see. What's, what's the next thing to do, talk about? I think it's on the next slide here. Yes, okay, so we've got some uh, some toy news to talk about. You guys may have seen this uh, around on the Facebooks and the Twitters and the, I don't know, wherever you get your Transformers Earth Wars news, or not Earth Wars, but just the Transformers toy news, maybe TFW2005 or Cybertron.com, you know, lots of places like that. Um, but these came out, and these are going to be Generation Selects uh, figures, they're recolors of a couple of uh, figures that we've seen before. These, I believe, are going to be available exclusively on the Hasbro Pulse website, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, so I thought this was pretty cool. The Galactic Man Shockwave, also known as Shackwave, because way back in G1, obviously Transformers released Shockwave in his familiar purple colors, but Radio Shack 
actually released a figure of Shockwave in this gray color. Not in the Transformers line, but they also happened to license that same toy from the Japanese company that made them, which I I'm not sure who that is. But the uh, Hasbro is now going to release that recolor in an homage to that, and they're calling him Galactic Man Shockwave. I don't see myself picking this guy up, but if I did, he would be called Shackwave. Shackwave. Uh, also, if you happened to pick up Greenlight from Amazon, which is a pretty nice little figure, it's just a retool of some of the bots that came before her, like Moon Racer and Nova Storm, uh, but still pretty cool. Uh, if you went and put in the code that you found on the box, the code is Lancer, and you would be given this image as a download. And you can see this is the female combiner with Alita 1 as the torso, Nova Star, Moon Racer, Green Light, and a classified limb. Uh, of course, I think everybody kind of got that from the code being called Lancer. Of course, we also got a name for this combiner called Orthia. Okay, we'll go with that. So, but but yes, the classified limb has officially been revealed as a, as a generation selects, and it is indeed Lancer. And again, just a retool of those female combiner bots in this nice orange and purple color scheme. I, I honestly, I I think I uh, I, I really like that color scheme. And uh, yeah, I I, I just. I don't know. I, I don't. I just like cr crazy, shockingly colored bots. And uh, speaking of shockingly colored bots, those guys are next. Why is Chromia missing? I don't know. We've got Chromia here. She's kind of in the same mold or whatever, but she came out in the Siege line. She's a heavy retool. In fact, so retooled they didn't even give her a combiner port. Uh, probably because they knew that they were going to be doing these other four. Uh, is probably I'm guessing why they didn't make Chromia with the combiner uh, ability there so all right coming up next like i said talking about brightly colored bots we've got the rainmakers now if you uh, i think the episode was called divide and conquer uh this showed up a couple of days ago somebody had one of these and put it up on ebay i think they it sold in the neighborhood of 180 bucks and everybody was like why are people spending 180 dollars on this why is hasbro charging that well, Hasbro didn't charge that. The eBay guy and people bid on it for um, for 180 bucks. And just today, hours before we got here, apparently it has been found at some Target somewhere in the United States for the price of $80, which is honestly a steal f for three Voyager class figures because they normally go for about 30 bucks. So one, two, three should be 90. And if it's going for 80, there you go. Uh, scalpers, well, yeah, obviously anybody who buys something just to turn around and flip it on eBay, I think is, a, it, you know, kind of fits that description. Uh, you know, I'm not saying everybody who sells on eBay, but I mean a brand new thing who's got it up on eBay before anybody even knows about it. I mean, what else can you call them? Uh, <laughs> so, but anyway, so we got a picture of those guys. And for anybody wondering, it's it's to homage this trio here from that um from that episode divide and conquer that's where some of the autobots went back to cybertron and uh megatron told these guys to go up into the sky and cause acid rain to fall and acid rain causes damage to uh, the autobots of course the humans spike and chip chase i think was there were unaffected and they managed to save the day uh, at the time these guys were not named but they are now the green one has been named for a while he's acid storm kind of fits with the whole acid rain storm there but we also have ion storm and no that's not sunstorm at the end that is nova storm and uh so yeah so they're the rainmakers they, they they weren't called that in the episode but fans kind of did that well now it's kind of an official name uh i, I think it's on the package somewhere not real sure uh, but yeah, so so it's Acid Storm, Ion Storm, and Nova Storm. Not to be confused with these guys who are the welcoming committee. <laughs> that is Sunstorm over there on the left. He's got a little bit more white parts to that. And if you've seen some of the Masterpiece Sunstorm and even Generation Sunstorms that have been around, he has more of that uh, varied color scheme as opposed to just a stark yellow 
And also, these other two guys ended up getting names uh, Bitstream and Hotlink, I think. Uh, so, are these guys actually going to get get released? Who knows? You, <laughs> it very well could because, you know, Seekers are so easy to just recall. There were so many Seekers in so many different colors. Um, uh, I can't even tell you how many Iron Factory Seekers versions that I have. Probably one of each of these guys we just talked about, plus all of the... Uh, uh, usual ones like Starscream, Thundercracker, and um, Skywarp. Uh, Red Alert, I see you here. Good. We've been holding off on the unboxing because I knew you were coming. Uh, we get, we still got a lot of a lot of news to go through. Um, all right. So the San Diego Comic Con is also ongoing, uh, or at least it's upcoming. But somebody uh, goes by Striker Wang on Twitter, and there's his little handle S250 underscore MKA. I, I. Uh, he posted up a bunch of pictures. Somehow he got into like the showroom and got a bunch of pictures of the Hasbro display. And here is a shot of Astro Train. I wish I had time to uh, brighten up these pictures a little bit. But there you go. So there is that leader class Astro Train who looks phenomenal. Uh, nothing against that uh, Titans Return Astro Train, but I don't like him as a headmaster, and honestly, that train mode is ridiculous. I mean, come on, it is. It's, it's, it's not a train, it's some triangular weird thing. Anyway, so, but but yes, it looks to have more of a traditional steam locomotive, although it's kind of a jumble in that picture. It's not a real good good look, but, but the shuttle even also looks more like the space shuttle as opposed to some Cybertronian vehicle or whatever. So I'm very excited about this Astro Train. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be getting this guy uh, when I can find him. And, and as you can see, he's standing up there and he, even kind of right next to him. It looks like he may even have some kind of an accessory where you can have him kind of like on a launch pad or something. So, so that's pretty cool. Let's see. All right. Saw, saw some uh, comments going over there. I'm hoping, hoping I'm not uh, <laughs> missing too many of those comments from you guys. Uh, let's see. Hayato says, catching the stream at work. About to go home. Uh, good, good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Primus, they forgot to paint themselves. Yeah, yeah, those those Rainmakers. They are just basically a single color, and they are super bright. Oh, I forgot. I brought this guy out here. Let me go here. here. Uh, just to show that I am a fan of the wildly colored... Uh, bots. This is actually a recolor of the Axor mold from, I think, the Revenge of Fallen Line. He, he was a Transformers Collectors Club subscription service exclusive. I didn't get that particular. Um, I didn't sign up for that particular subscription, but I did get him uh, after the fact. Uh, he was kind of on sale, so I didn't pay the ridiculous prices. But uh, I did get him because I thought the color was was crazy. And I think his name is Circuit. It's supposed to be like the reporter bot. Uh, for the Transformers on Cybertron. So yeah, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in on those Rainmakers there. So well, let's get back over here. Uh, going back, continuing on with the San Diego Comic-Con stuff, there is Ape Face. Uh, we're seeing him in two of his three modes. There's his robot mode and his jet mode. So that's very cool. You can see Spinister in the back there, but we'll uh, be uh, seeing a little bit closer shot of him. Uh, so yeah, he does look uh, pretty cool. Uh, from what I can see, I never had an ape face and didn't have a whole lot of nostalgic connection to him. But, you know, I, I do appreciate very cool Transformers. And uh, I, I have purchased plenty of Transformers that I never had before that I never even knew about uh, growing up or whatever. Just because they look cool and this dude looks cool. Uh, now, if you got Ape Face, people are asking, is he, are they going to bring out Snapdragon? I think it's a highly likely possibility that they're going to. They haven't uh, announced it yet, but if they got they, those two guys kind of go together, if they're bringing him out, they're probably going to bring out Snapdragon at some point. And he is indeed a headmaster, which I am totally okay with because he was a headmaster to begin with. So, yeah, you guys are asking if I'm getting Unicron. We'll get there. We'll get there. Sit tight. Uh, <laughs> all right so we're talking about spinister we saw him in the back of the ape face picture and i'm excited about this guy i actually did get this guy in g1 i still have my g1 spinister although one of his rotors has recently snapped off unfortunately uh, otherwise he's in pretty good shape and uh oh he is he looks so cool so cool it's like the perfect representation of spinister uh the only difference is 
Yeah, he was a double target master, so the two guns he has there, they are homaging his two target master partners, although they don't look to be target masters themselves. Uh, one of the interesting things about this guy is both of his legs are a full cockpit. And how do they pull that off? How do you have a full cockpit on both legs? Well, if you look closely in the picture of the helicopter, you can see one of those full cockpits is obviously acting as a cockpit. But just underneath the back, kind of sticking out the side under the tail, you can see a little bit of blue with a little pin in there. That's where the, I think they're hiding that second cockpit there. So very cool. Uh, definitely on board with this guy. And uh, I know a lot of people were talking about maybe a recolor of him as Rotor Storm. Uh, and uh, my only knowledge of Rotor Storm is from the IDW comics. I think it was the like, last stand of the Wreckers. And uh, I'm totally on board with that. I do think that would be actually a very good fit. And here is the um, Ironhide repaint of Crosshairs. So he's, he's basically Ironhide but blue and red with a new head. Um, so, I mean, you can't really knock him for that because that's basically what Ratchet is. He's, he's Ironhide except white. Uh, I'm not sure. They'll probably put a new head on for Ratchet because Ratchet usually has that little crest to, I, I guess, that, you know, kind of like a kind of like old Prowl here. Kind of, Ratchet has a very similar little uh, crest on his head. Uh, so I, I, I do expect a new head for Ratchet. I have, I'm sh I think there's pictures out, but I haven't, haven't managed to see them yet. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be getting crosshairs. If I get him, it's probably because I'll be purchasing a, the full wave if from one of the online retailers, and he'll be in there, and I'll end up having him. Um, but even, even though I've been kind of lukewarm on some Transformers in the past, I usually end up getting them if it's a dry spell for picking up new figures and I see it on the shelf and just gotta, 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 gotta feed the monkey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> monkey Prime gets hungry. You gotta go feed him <laughs> by purchasing new toys uh, every so often. It's kind of why I have Construct Bots on my shelf somewhere and Bot Bots and things like that. <laughs> Although Bot Bots are pretty cool. Um, Alright, so so there's also the Micro Master. Apparently these guys are coming in a 10-pack. I have no idea who any of these guys are. Uh, but looking at them, uh, I see a lot of repaints of the Micro Masters we've got already. Those couple of jets that are sitting there. I, in fact, I think in the middle those look like a couple of jets. I think those are the same jets we've already gotten. Pretty sure we have those... Uh, um, those two like uh, missile launcher dudes on the left or, or like a thing like what is it like a art artillery mobile artillery or something and even on the right standing up looks like that fire truck like the rescue patrol in a different color the, although but then you see those two in the front in the truck mode and kind of like an SUV mode those guys look new I don't know if we'll end up seeing them in another set before this whole thing comes out but those two guys look like new molds or at least re heavy remolds of other ones that we've already got there. So, so yeah, pr pretty cool. Uh, not sure if I'll be picking this one up, but like I said, with crosshairs, you never know. All right, let's see, pineapple samurai. I don't know what I'm, I'm miss missing with that one there. Um, oh look, clone troop, clone troopers here. We can, the party can start now. He says. <laughs> All right, well let's start the party with. This uh, double MicroMaster, not not entirely sure who this guy is supposed to be, but it looks like it's a not really a duocon, not really a combiner, because usually when we think of combiners, it's bots coming together to form a bigger bot. This is kind of like that ice cream truck of Skids and Mudflap from those Bayformers movies, um, it, where it's two bots who turn into two halves of a of a vehicle. It's pretty cool, uh, it's, it, and it's definitely a unique idea. I'll probably pick this guy up just for because they're unique, and um, you know you gotta be uh, you gotta respect any bot who's walking around with uh, pink thighs. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, big and chunky, Tran Augustine, absolutely right there. <laughs> big and chunky, and we got another chunky bot coming up with who's not getting a whole lot of love uh, in the social medias here. Um, this guy right here. Uh, this right here is Frenzy. Uh, no, actually, he's probably going to be re released as Rumble, but I'm I'm uh, definitely a subscriber of the Rumble is Blue, Frenzy is Red camp because I grew up with the cartoon, and that's how they were colored. But at the same time, 
I go by whatever name's on the package because you know the, the they change colors all the time. And you you know I, I hear people like calling them Frumble because kind of portmanteauing frenzy and rumble, and I think that's the best way of doing it because uh, I also always like to point back to that one scene in the movie. Uh, on the battle on earth when Soundwave ejects them and for the briefest moment you can see the two of them flying and they are both red and black in this color scheme so I like to think in my head canon that these guys can change their colors at will and being little imps that they are will change their colors just to mess with people's heads so but yes I believe the name on this package is probably going to be rumble because that's usually what they call the toys the red one is usually rumble in the toys and of course next to him is rat bat who is unmistakable uh there and uh, looks pretty cool uh um so let's see we've got a uh, sound uh sound wave obviously and we've got what ravage and laser beak and they they could have easily taken the easy way out and given us uh buzzsaw but instead they're actually giving us rat bat my guess we're gonna see buzzsaw come with the uh, blue dude uh probably called frenzy there uh probably in a future wave uh riddler saying i hope his thighs extend yeah i hope so i hope there's a little bit of a mistransformation there um if not he's going to make for some probably some fun uh toy comics out there for the people who actually still do that i used to do that in a while but uh i haven't done that uh, let's see now this guy was a surprise and I like him, but I've got a thought on this. So that if you're not familiar with the IDW comics, this is Rung. He is a psychologist from the More Than Meets the Eye comic, also turned into Lost Light. And it is so cool to see Rung get an actual official figure. In fact, none of the third parties have even done a figure of this guy. I'm aware that there are some 3D printing, like Shapeways type uh, versions of Rung out there. But this is an official version. I should be actually calling him wrong or ring or something because that was kind of the joke in the comic that nobody could get his name right. But here's my problem with him being a target master. Part of the deal with Rung is that nobody knew what he turned into. He was just a thing. You know, the, 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 the functionists couldn't figure out what he turned into. But here, he's actually turning into a gun who has, like, water spray coming out of, out of him. But you know they got they you know in a toy form they got to turn him into something, but still they captured the the one time we saw kind of his alt mode. I, I, there may have been more than one. That he was basically just a big long cylinder with kind of a little round thing on the top, which you can kind of see there. Although I hope it gets a little bit painted or something, uh, or maybe there'll be some uh, toy hacks labels or something on there. Uh, because that, that just the standard orange color kind of gets lost in there. Although the, the chest coloring on him is actually really cool. And I am excited for this guy. I am 100% getting this guy. Uh, definitely got to get a rung on my shelf in my collection. So uh, Michael saying, in Lost Light, rung was either a pencil or a pen. They actually officially... Uh, when they gave him a label because they had to give him a label because you can't just turn into nothing because that's a whole tenet of the functionist concept is every bot has a function uh, so they had to give him a function so they call him an ornament <laughs> so yes these are siege toys uh, as far as I know I believe the packaging does actually say siege uh, I don't think we're into the next uh, line of War for Cybertron yet which is yet to be named although uh, <laughs> it could be called Unicron War for Cybertron, perhaps. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's the end of those slides. Let's get over to the other slides that I need to. We're going to talk about the big guy himself, the Chaos Bringer. Who? Now, this is going to be a, little, a, a bit of a discussion, and um, I'm actually... I'm going to record this right now because I want to post this up as a separate video because this is such a such big news and I really want to do uh, do that. Uh, so if you stand by, I'm going to go and I'm going to reset, restart, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Unicron. Okay, guys. All right. All right. Should be recording now. Okay, I got a whole thing planned. Oh. <laughs> 
Bali Grana Weep Nidibon, I have summoned you here for a reason. Nobody summons Megatron. Right, shut up, Megatron. Nobody's talking about talking to you. It's not about you always. Okay, we're we're here to talk about Unicron. The, the toy. <laughs> I hope that wasn't so crazy. Uh, but yes, okay, so the Chaos Bringer. We <laughs> we saw him. I'm laughing way too hard at my own joke. Okay. Hasbro, Haslabs, announced a Unicron toy for the first time since, since like Armada. We've got a whole bunch of repaints. In fact, I got one sitting back there. Uh, it, it was the 25th anniversary in the G1 colors, or whatever. This this is the first time. This is this guy is big news. Okay, let's let me. Get, I can't deal with that now. Okay, <laughs> I forgot to turn. Come off of the. Uh, <laughs> come off of the soundboard and ultra magnus can't deal with it right now so that's actually perfect so <laughs> so but yeah so they put out this little bit of art here and you probably saw a little bit of this on the thumbnail and i think this looks really great you know it's a good shot of unicron there and uh the the background it's very reminiscent of when he turned megatron into galvatron and you know cyclonus and uh scourge and stuff like that but Let's, let's go step through. Now, if you go over to the Hasbro Pulse website, you'll see the link for Unicron. You can go see all these images. This is where I got pretty much all these. There's also a video in there. I did some screen grabs from that video. Uh, it's actually pretty cool to see it in, in motion, uh, some of these things. But I thought this was pretty cool seeing a little bit of their the work, the thought process going through. So this sketch here is pretty cool. So you can go get that. Uh, Chris Taylor saying, I hope he lights up. I did hear that there's going to be some LEDs in there. So I think at least his eyes are going to light light up. Uh, so very cool. So so from that sketch, they went to a more colored sketch. And uh, already this guy looks imposing. I mean, this looks like it was pulled straight from the cartoon almost. Like a, one of the character concepts even, I think, that they were doing in there. And um, you can tell I'm excited because I am talking fast. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so they moved on to the renders. So here is a render without a lot of the details in there because you can see the chest is kind of a little plain or whatever but uh i'm not sure what all the different little highlighted bits were meant to be but i'm sure it meant something to the people doing it so there he is and uh, uh, uh kind of a big spread of him and then then they made a prototype again without all the details they just 3d printed basically they've got a huge 3d printing machine uh, i saw uh something a while back I'm, i don't remember exactly what it was but they, they can do rapid prototyping they can just 3D print. Oh, no, I don't like that. They go tweak it a little bit and then print another one. And then they're right back to it. They don't even have to do any of the tooling for mass production to get these uh, prototypes. So this is like a very simple uh, prototype. But already you can see just how awesome this guy is going to be. And so they went ahead and stood this prototype up against Titan's Return, Fortress Maximus. And look at this guy. One of the things that people are complaining about. Oh, it's only 27 inches. Why is he so much money? Uh, you know, it's... it's Look at him. It's not just four inches. Uh, yes, he's four inches tall, but he's super wide. I, I mean, Fortress Maximus, if you've had him or seen him, he is a big transformer, and he is dwarfed by Unicron. This guy is um, humongous. He's amazing. He's supposed to be almost 20 pounds, guys. 20 pounds. This guy is going to be insane. He is not going to ever be on the shelf behind me because he won't handle it. Because the shelf won't handle it. I don't think it's even big enough to hold him anyway. But it's amazing. Look at how big that guy is. Oh, I mean, and then here's his alt mode. Can you imagine that whole big mess somehow turns into a perfect sphere? with the ring around it and it is on actually on a stand so that you can hold it up now this this figure if you look at this let's go back over to the camera so so here's the only unicron we've had before if you kind of look at it from this this way it actually looks pretty good but if we turn him around he is not a even a perfect half sphere the back side is even worse so this is the best Unicron we've had to date, and he's really only good from like one fourth of a view. And, you know, so th this deal is actually pretty cool, where he's kind of got the jaws, but but the new one coming is even better. And uh, but but yeah, but I mean, this is don't get me wrong, I like this toy. I'm happy to have this toy, and he looks great in alt mode or, or uh, robot mode. But but he doesn't hold a candle to this. This, this is crazy. 
it's amazing. And then there's the backside. Again, perfect sphere with, like, spikes and other stuff. And uh, Devin PV saying Kibble City. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I got some pictures of that, too. Okay, so these are, like, the uh, official product shots. I believe this is a painted prototype of him. And uh, so apparently the eyes actually move and the mouth opens. And they say there's articulation in the teeth. Uh, my guess on that is probably so you can actually close the mouth. with it, Because if the teeth are out like that, you couldn't actually fully close the mouth. My guess is they're kind of spring-loaded so that you could actually fully close the mouth. Uh, but he, he, and there, here's a shot of the toy in like full uh, hero pose glory. Looks great. There's the colored toy on the stand. That's just amazing. Could you imagine just setting that? I almost want two, just for to have one in alt mode and one in robot mode. I'm not sure that I can't afford two, but I, I think it would be great. And I would not doubt uh, or. or put down anybody who would want to because I, I'm not sure which one's a, a better mode to have them in. Uh, so there, there's a close-up of the maw, the the, the the little claw thing like I showed there where you can push the two, you know, and just kind of have it closed. This is so much cooler because all those little jaws in there actually open and close. You turn that little ring around it, uh, like, like here, so you can see they're open, and if you turn the ring, they actually close. This is actually from the video, so you can actually see the person go and turn that ring and open and close those jaws. That is so, so cool. And, and again, look at the hand. Look at the size of that hand on that person. Imagine your hand against this thing. This thing's going to be immense, absolutely immense. Transformers fan number one is joining the stream. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, we're just going over how excited I am for this new Unicron toy. And, uh, man, so cool, so cool. Uh, all right, so, so yeah, so there's the Maw. It go, definitely, go, it, even if you're not interested in it, go over there and watch that video, or I'm sure one of the new sites or whatever probably got it posted up there. Maybe they have a, um, I think there's a GIF going around where somebody got this because it's that's how cool it is. Uh, oh, this, oh, man, I can't believe it. It's just so great. And now look at him compared to Siege Optimus Prime. That is a Siege Optimus Prime there. And yeah, that's a Voyager class figure. That's a pretty standard Voyager class figure. I thought I had him out here on the desk, but now he's off somewhere else uh, chilling. Uh, but oh my god, this guy is huge. Huge. How much will it cost? You know, I don't think I put up a slide of that, but it's 570 was it? Five hundred seventy-four dollars. Um, they, they do add on tax. I believe standard shipping. Uh, if you're in the United States, at least for me, it was free shipping uh, because you know free shipping over fifty bucks. Well, this guy is way over fifty bucks, um, including tax and everything. He was he was about six fifteen, six fifteen. And uh, I, I guess I just admitted that. Yes, indeed, I am in on this guy. I have pre-ordered one, and I will be happy. When Hasbro comes and pulls that money out of my account on August 31st. <laughs> because that is so cool. I can't wait for this guy. Look at him. Now you shall witness his dismemberment. Another great thing about these, and I didn't grab any of them for the stream, is all of the memes out there. That They've got the shot of this guy. I think from the, the, the you know, your wallet. You know, I plan on sparing your wallets. Now you shall witness his dismemberment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is definitely go check out go if you're not on the Facebook uh, fan pages and stuff like that go check out these Unicron memes they are so hilarious I I love it I love it I love it all right so just in uh, this is also from um, striker Wang that we saw from the SDCC uh, earlier um, which if you're watching the Unicron video it, it, it was in my uh, live stream over there which is where we're doing this live um, but he, he shared some pictures of this guy from San Diego Comic-Con on Twitter. So they actually built this guy. They got him there in encased in glass in, at San Diego Comic-Con for people to go gawk at. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, look at that. And there it is also in alt mode. And that's... Oh my goodness, that is, I just, I can't, there's no words about how great this is. Uh, and now, I totally get, not everybody's going to be able to afford that, uh, you know, I, I get it. And But 
you know, and there's there's criticisms about why is it crowdfunded, and I think that's wise because they know not everybody's going to be able to afford it. I mean, look, take take Trypticon for example, the Titan class, which uh, everybody has said we really want Trypticon, we really want Trypticon. They put out a Trypticon, they put it to retail for like 150 bucks, which is like the standard for the Titan class size, and I think the stores like Walmart's and Targets, they just didn't buy it. And put it on the shelves. I never saw a Trypticon on a shelf, except at like at Ollie's. You know, so but n nobody bought it. So it ended up going deep discount on all these discount stores, and they don't want to do that with this guy. And so, so none of the stores would ever buy something this big, uh, even if they were. They, they might be able to reduce the price a little bit, but he'd probably still be like 300 bucks. Uh, the, I think the general public, the mass retail public who generally buys Transformers figures, still probably wouldn't pay 300 or 350 for this guy. So, so I, I, you know, it's it's unusual, but you know, it's not the first time that a company's gotten done this. In fact, I think Hasbro themselves, uh, here, here it was a year or two years ago, did uh, for Star Wars did a Java sale barge or something, which actually did pretty good about it. Uh, uh, they, they did pretty good. They re reached their goals, and pe people spent a ton of money on that. It was huge, and everything that I've heard, people love that thing. And in fact, they're doing something for the Sesame Street fans. There's a cookie monster out there. In fact, one of the memes about Unicron involves cookie monster, and I think that's actually pretty full, too. Uh, so, yeah, Brayshawn Baker's saying uh, Trypticon for $69.99. Big Bronze Grimm saying, yeah, the cold reality of it is, you know, you got supply and demand. You know, so... Yeah, so many people say they want things, but they don't open their wallets. Absolutely. Yeah, so so, so that that's why uh, this is probably too much of a risk for Hasbro to kind of just put out there to to lose a uh, lose a boatload on. So they figured they'd put it out there. Uh, that you know, everybody says, "Hey, talk with your wallets." If you if you want the uh, if you want the companies to make changes or whatever, you go talk with your wallets. So that's what they're doing. They put it out of the crowdfund and said, "Hey, do you guys want this? Tell us with your wallets." And uh, last I checked, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve or thirteen hundred people out of the eight thousand minimum that they need talked with their wallets because they they're, they're progressing along and they've still got almost two months to go. I'm pretty sure. They're going to hit that uh, 8,000 uh, minimum. So a lot of people are saying, "Oh, yeah, it's limited to 8,000." No, it's not limited to 8,000. You know, if, if if a half a million people show up and talk with their wallets and say they want this guy, they'll make a half a million of them. I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course. In fact, I've got a soundbite for that. You exaggerate. <laughs> so I should have thought of. I should have thought of that. Uh, but. Um, uh, but yeah, but I mean, you know, if nine, ten thousand people uh, go and talk with the wallet and say they want this, they're going to make nine or ten thousand. It's not limited to eight thousand, but it's a minimum of eight thousand. If, if only three thousand people go in and say they want it, then they probably won't do it. Uh, so, so definitely, if you guys want it, you've got like until August thirty first to get out there and uh, put down the money. So uh, start, start uh, counting your, looking under your sofa cushions, count your change. Uh, you know, maybe put aside. Uh, I, I had to go find the money. I didn't have it just laying around. I decided that, you know, I could wait another year for a sprinkler system at my house, uh, but I got to get this guy. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> Darn it, I, I, didn't, I moved, didn't move off of the uh, soundboard again. Uh, so, <laughs> so we got a little Super Mario sound effect there. Oh, I got I really got to work on uh, paying attention to that. Okay, so we t somebody talked about kibble. Yes, so here's the, here's the backpack, and you can see in the legs and the kibble and stuff like that, uh, yes, absolutely. This kind of looks terrible from this mode, but you, it's it's what I always say to anybody who uh, get, uh, complains about the back and stuff like that. Okay, Devin said he's the one who said that. Um, a lot of people complain. Oh, look at the kibble. Look at the backpack hanging off of there. He looks terrible from the back. And what I say to this is what I always say. I'm not going to display this guy facing the wall. All of this stuff that 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 is un, that may be unacceptable, and yes, I agree. If this is what he looked like from the front, yeah, forget it, no. But I'm not going to be seeing this view because he's not. I'm not going to be facing that. That's going to be against the wall. So, so that's what I'm. Uh, that's that's my thought on anything with a bad backpack. A lot of figures have look terrible from the back because they're not designed to look good from the back. And uh, Big Bronze Rim saying it's relatively clean for around planet. Yes, this is the sacrifice you have to have for having that alt mode look so absolutely perfect. 
uh, in reality, you know, you do have to deal with the reality of plastics. You know, Transformers in the animation cheats a lot, especially in G1. They cheat a lot. I mean, there's the whole mass shifting thing. You know, why, how can Megatron be a 35 foot tall robot and then turn into a human sized handgun? You can't do that in reality. Uh, how does Optimus Prime's trailer just kind of disappear? Oh yeah, subspace pocket. Okay, that's not reality. That trailer has to go somewhere. You know, how do you turn a perfectly round planet into a robot? He's got to have a shell. There's no other way around it. So the, it, the, this, is, this is what you get when you have to deal with reality and you can't just cheat in a cartoon. Okay, so now here's the backside of the, and on a good note, the backside of the alt mode. Uh, just, if you want perfection, get this guy to display him as a planet because I don't see any flaws in that planet. Yeah, sure, there's panel lines because there's panels. But yeah, this guy is just, oh, he is an absolute, absolute must have. I am on board. Are you on board? Uh, let me know in the chat or in the comments. Let's get back over here and we're going to go ahead and end the uh, recording. If you're in the stream, the stream will continue for a little bit. Uh, but for everybody who's watching the Unicron video, thank you so much. I'm Engineer Hoist. Keep rolling, my friends, and we'll see you next time. Okay, guys, what do you think about all that? Uh, that that is the end of my slides and we actually have hit the one hour mark uh, we're not done yet actually because I've got I still got a box to open I've still got a box to open uh, one of the reasons why I was holding this off is because one of the things in here is actually for red alert who's in the chat and uh, so he, he couldn't be here right at the beginning and he was waiting uh, patiently i actually still have to open it uh, kids be careful with knives get your parents to open your boxes for you um, uh, parents be careful with the knives get safe knives and cut away from you and stuff like that i'm doing this off screen because this is a huge box and uh, i actually have three things in here two of them are for me and one of them is for my buddy red alert over there Get all this out of the way. I feel like I'm pulling out somebody's intestines with all this paper packaging. Okay, so first things first. The we got this from TF Source. They always package in plenty of um, bubble wrap. So if you're one of those people who likes to pop the bubble wrap, you, you'll be loving it. Okay, first first thing I got. This is a Iron Factory Hound the Optics Hunter. Uh, but that's not what we're here to see. We're here to see these other guys. And uh, oh, look at the size of this package. Oh, bigger package, more tape, more bubble wrap. I think I've got it. Do I got it? No. Is free siege jet fire we've got two of these guys in the box just to, just to show you there's the other one but we're just going to look at the one guy for now there he is see that now he there's there's no window on this box this is just a solid box so there he is you guys, you guys want me to, uh, you guys want me to open this here? You guys want me to open this here on the stream? I'm, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Gotta drop links to where you order all your transformers. Uh, TFSource.com. I'll just, I'll just tell you, you know, that, that's where I get it. <laughs> Big DC, and of course, yeah, I, I knew that was the answer. That's why I already started opening it. Probably be recording this too. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, Primus. He's beautiful. Oh my gosh. This guy is gorgeous and he is humongous. Do I gotta 
a comparison. I've got a comparison. Okay, somebody said they got Red Alert I recently today recently I got him a couple days ago. There's Red Alert, uh, deluxe class siege figure next to Jetfire. Look at that guy! Oh my! And yes, Red Alert, you're fantastic. You got you got a great figure, dude. They did you right. Um, yeah, I hear to Chosen Prime Toy jo Dojo. A lot of them are actually pretty good. Yeah, T TF Source, just like he spelled it, but just push them together and add slap on a dot com, and that's where I get all my figures. Uh, the reason I do that is, um, and I think there's some others that, that do that as well. Um, you can earn some points uh, for like uh, basically free dollars or stuff like that. Uh, plus, also, I like to stack things where if you uh, order $150 worth of stuff, it's free shipping. Uh, so that. Oh. Oh my goodness, there are so many little tie wraps and things. Okay. Looks like there's some uh, fire effect parts here. I really don't have a work surface. I, 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 I'm not going to be opening too much, but it looks like some of them are little, little flares, and then some of them are more like uh, straight out, like they would be coming out of thrusters or something like that. So that that's really cool. That's why he's big enough to let Prime and the others get inside right around. Well, there again, there's that there's that scale issue. Because uh, even at this size, even at this big, he's still too small. He would still have to mass shift to be bigger to let the other ones uh, ride around. Because, I mean, look at the cockpit in there. You can't get Red Alert inside that cockpit without some serious mass shifting on Jetfire. So, yeah, like I was saying before with the Unicron and, and all that stuff, definitely some uh, uh, cheating going on. Oh, man, I did not bring any scissors. I brought the, brought the knife. And uh, I do not want to take a risk of slicing this guy open. But anyway, so... He'd have to be the size of the USS Flag. That, yeah, if anybody who doesn't know what the USS Flag, that was a toy from the G.I. Joe back in the day. It was seven foot long. I wanted that so bad. I was, I don't really do G.I. Joe much anymore, but I was so in, almost as much into G.I. Joe back in the day as, as uh, I am now. And uh, I had one of the, I had one of their bases. I had a lot of their toys. I had a lot of their figures. And I really, 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 really wanted the USS Flag. But man. Just like, Fort, just like Fortress Maximus and the Transformers, it was just too much. It was just too much. So, yeah, there's Jetfire. And he's, he's got, like, extra armor here. He's got lots of guns around there. He's supposed to have, like, another head. Uh, must be some kind of a gimmick where it's inside. You can actually kind of see the back of him there. He doesn't even... They even had to cut out a hole in the back of the package for that. Oh my goodness, giant packs through his wings. Now doesn't his uh, Autobot symbol flip around? Yeah, yeah, check that out. Now he's Decepticon Jetfire. Because again, if you remember uh, the original in the G1 uh, cartoon, which is the model that this guy is based off of, when he was first uh, uniced, Decepticon, uh, Megatron and Starscream all got to him first, and he was buddies with Starscream back on Cybertron, and they they sold him a little story, and uh, so so he had a Decepticon logo on his chest first, and he was fighting the Autobots until they until he learned the truth, and he turned on the Decepticons, and uh, they they uh, convinced him to become the Autobot that that we know and love. They kind of homage that in the uh, IDW comics too. Back kind of before the war, he kind of was rolling with the Decepticons because he agreed with their uh, their their thoughts, their ideology, if you will. Uh, until he kind of learned a little bit of the truth, and he, he eventually did join up with the Autobots and became a very uh, uh, important scientist. With so, so yeah, so there's Siege Jetfire. Oh man, I cannot wait to get this guy. But I just don't, I just don't have the uh, stuff. You guys want to see Hound too? Um, yeah, yeah. There were scientists. I, I, I'm still. I'm sorry. I still can't buy Starscream as a scientist. <laughs> that guy's no way Starscream is a scientist. Okay, yeah. So Optics Hunter is the Iron Factory Hound, and if if you didn't know, I love Iron Factory. I get like everything from Iron Factory. Um, Early on, I didn't get all the recolors um, unless it made sense. Like, uh, I, I did get a, uh, obviously, like the Dots and Bros, like uh, Prowl, Blue Streak, Smoke Streak. They actually came in a set. 
and I recently did get their Blue Flash, which, oh my goodness, that guy is amazing. Uh, it's the same exact thing, but it's, it's like a metal, metallic blue. And uh, I have, I must have probably 10 of the Seeker Starscream mold by now. Uh, the, the most recent one came out is it called Bloodwing. I think it's uh, I think it's like Redwing, which is kind of ironic that that just came out and Hasbro even did a Redwing. Uh, but it, it actually has like a translucent, or for anybody who's a fan of MGO, transparent uh, cape, like this uh, coronation set or whatever. All right, so so there is Hound. This is the Optics Hunter from from Iron Factory. Pretty cool little guy. Um, I can't really talk much more about him other than he looks cool. Um, he's got he's got like the nice little uh, Jeep front there. Pretty good looking, pretty good looking head. He's got the there's the front of his um, uh, Jeep mode there. Um, he does come with a little bag of, of alternate hands, which I do like. What Al Iron Factory has started to do with. Uh, they, they generally come packaged with this completely closed fist, and then in this package is a pair of open fists with a five millimeter port, so he can hold his uh, weapons. Which actually, I, I can probably weapon him up for you a little bit. All right, so he does have like his shoulder cannon here. Uh, how does that fit on there? Gonna go something like something like that, and so so you, you can't actually hold his uh, gun unless I swap out the hands. Um, but um, let's see, so so there is there is his actual gun there, uh, right next to him. So it's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. But uh, so yeah, so so he does have a pair of hands where you can hold that gun. It's got a five millimeter port and you can hold any. Standard Transformers weapon. Uh, then he also has kind of a jazz hands fist, and pretty the Iron Factory in the last year or two has been uh, doing that for all of their figures, giving you that option. Uh, uh, some of them even might have a pointy uh, hand or something like that. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, sm small bot. The, uh, yeah, well, the, these guys, uh, the Iron Factory, they're all about like the legend scale. Uh, so, so like you know, Scout class. Uh, size scale uh, that's that's their standard size um, so like even their Bruticus combiner is uh, about the size of a leader class uh, in, a, in a normal uh, normal scale but I love the these uh, iron these figures from Iron Factory um, and they've, they've only improved over the years uh, and uh, yeah I, <laughs> I've got tons of them I don't think I have any other sitting around me right now um, but I've got most of them that have come out in pretty much anything new that they've got coming out. I've got pre-ordered. Um, I did see some, what, what do you call them? Uh, what is it? The Magic Square stuff is coming out with a hoist. I've got that on order, of course. I haven't. Uh, uh, the problem with that is I've been avoiding that Magic Square stuff. Now, now, see the Iron Factory. One thing I like about them is they're very much uh, the kind of like Cybertronian modes. Um, it's very similar to what they're doing with Siege. Uh, very kind of Cybertronian modes, like the Dinobots that came out with the Iron Factory are uh, kind of like the War Within, like they're, they're Cybertronian vehicle modes, not dinosaurs and stuff like that, which I thought was really cool. Uh, and um, but where the, then you got a company like Magic Square is actually coming out with like true to life uh, Generation One type of alt modes, which do look great. They look great, but I'm like, I gotta draw the line somewhere. I gotta draw the line somewhere, but. They're coming out with a hoist, and they're the first one to come out with a hoist in this scale, so I gotta get them. And I'm just worried that that's actually going to open the Pandora's box of the Magic Square line. And uh, kind of like, for example, I was avoiding the uh, GoBots for a while. Uh, they're, they're actually Machine Robo, but they, they're they, it's, these aren't even third party. These are like the original Machine Robo uh, that that uh, one from Japan. Uh, but they're they're very highly articulated. I was I was avoiding these, and then I saw that leader one. And I was like, oh, let's let's go try to try to take take get a look at that guy, and uh, it was so good. Now I'm just kind of totally in for the line there. Oh my goodness. Uh, so you guys, 
Sorry, I've been talking toys and all this stuff. You guys got Earth Wars questions. There's Sentius Magnus has a four star Sentius Magnus. Well, congratulations. It's about time you got your namesake at a four star. And uh, core for Sentius Magnus, if you have Amalgamous Prime, it will be very hard for your Sentinel or Sentius Magnus to die if you've got Amalgamous Prime core on him. Because I've got that Amalgamous Prime core on mine. And. Uh, Granted, I've got him up uh, level 53 now, I think, and a pretty high ability level and a pretty high amalgamous core. And he goes into zone 11, zone 12, and he, he, he demolishes the base and leaves the base with full health. Full health, because the amalgamous core heals your bot based on the damage that the alt mode does. And Sentius Magnus does a ton of damage in alt mode. So Alchemist Prime, I think, is also pretty good. If you don't have either of those Prime cores, I would definitely go with like what Chris Taylor is saying, Rejuvenate. Yes, definitely. Would, would I love to see Sentius Magnus as a Siege figure? I would love to see Sentius Magnus as any figure. Siege, sure. The follow-up to Siege, third party, whatever. I would love to see Sentius Magnus. And if we got a Magnus, we'd obviously get a Malice, probably as a two-pack. Uh, I would love to see those guys. Uh, and even though we haven't seen it in Transformers Earth Wars, they did allude to this in the story where they came from a single entity. It would actually be really cool if somebody could figure out, and they may be out there working on it now, how you had a Sentius Magnus and a Sentius Malice somehow combine into Sentius Nobilius, uh, very similar to, what was it, uh, Jet Storm, something in Animated? I, I, man, I can't remember what those, but there were those two little young bots in Animated that, uh, like, I want to say Jet Fire and Jet Storm or something, uh, actually kind of combined into, like, a larger bot. I, can, I cannot remember those names. Uh, somebody out there probably knows. Um, Jetfire, Jetstorm into Safeguard. There you go. Thank you, Grand Galvatron. So I was close. I was close to it. Uh, but yeah, it would be cool to see if they did something like that. If they couldn't pull that off good in a good way, I would rather just see the two of them individually. So did they ever fix the bug that was where Black Rocky and Cheetor the Alchemist Corps? You know, I don't. I haven't heard much about that. I think that I. I Either they fixed it, or they've ignored it long enough that people quit complaining about it and just moved on. I, I'm not real sure which is the case. <laughs> Any more toys in the box? No, just just a second jet fire that uh, I'm, I'm saving for old Red Alert, who I uh, plan to uh, run over to to him on uh, this weekend. Um, although I did just see notification that the Planet X, uh, the War for Cybertron inspired. Uh, Ironhide and Ratchet just came in. Um, uh, they, uh, they just arrived in stock. And there was some, something else actually. Oh, oh, yeah, Masterpiece Movie Megatron, I think, is uh, arriving soon. So uh, might be pulling those guys in there. So what you guys did you guys like this unboxing? Would you like to see more of this stuff? As I get stuff in, just kind of unbox it and maybe show it to you. Uh, I, I, I thought it was pretty fun and uh, maybe not tack it on to the end of a stream it just so happened that this box arrived like 30 minutes before the stream I knew it was supposed to come but UPS always gets to my house late I'm apparently on the end of their route so it actually worked out great uh, that it arrived I was worried because they have arrived after 8 p.m. You know, which is when I started the stream they have arrived after that before I was a little worried that I was actually going to be uh, having to leave you guys and say be right back you know and go answer the door um, but uh, turned out that didn't happen and uh, but but yeah um, all right so you guys are saying yes to the unboxing yes to the unboxing but yes big bronze I know you love toys uh, you, you probably got cooler toys than I do you got some of those masterpiece uh, combiners uh, there so yeah definitely I, I'm, I'm definitely impressed with your collection too buddy uh, Red Alert saying, heck yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, am, am I still saving for that five-star uh, Optimus Primal? Yeah, yeah, I am. We're, we're not maxing out the raids or anything, so our chance isn't super high. But I, honestly, I'm not really interested in anything else that they, they have in the chance score. So, I mean, if it takes four years, five years, or whatever for me to get to that level, uh, then, then so be it. You know, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep saving. Thank <laughs> you. 
And Transformers fans says, you need more Energon stories to combine the first war to Earth Wars combiner. Yeah, it does. It is going to take a little. Uh, it does take a little while. Like even if you did get happen to get all the four stars for a combiner, you still have to be at level or headquarters fourteen, with two of the three energon storages leveled up to the headquarters fourteen level, to be able to store enough energon to form a four star combiner. So, the the uh, the combiners are not an early game. Uh, type of a thing. In fact, in fact, uh, what is what is it? You got to be some sort of a level of uh, headquarters, I think, to even unlock the Combiner Wars campaign. Uh, I might be wrong with, might be wrong on that. It's been a while since it's, because uh, I was already beyond that level by the time the Combiners came out. So, uh, disappointed it's a leaderboard again. Yeah, you know, you know, I actually. I want to make a video on it because I actually did do some research uh, about uh, what types of events that bots were released with, and it, it seems like it, leaderboard is definitely the majority, um, but it's, I'd say probably 60%. It's not a large majority of, of leaderboard. There has been quite a few bots released as procedures. Good night, Sentious Magnus. Thanks for stopping by, man. Um, yeah, so so um, so there's definitely been more bots released by a leaderboard than any other method, uh, not counting the ones that were available in global. Um, but yeah, the leaderboards, you know, the leaderboards are great for anybody in the top alliances. But if you're not in any of those alliances, then then, then, you, then it's not a big deal. So, okay, great, cool. I'll get the two star and I'll wait for Christmas. Uh, and as somebody who is not. Uh, not, has not shied away from purchasing crystal bundles. Um, it's it's okay. It's okay for me. Uh, I definitely can understand the disappointment and the frustration for anybody who doesn't isn't lucky enough to have the disposable income to purchase uh, crystal bundle after crystal bundle. So I, I definitely get get that uh, frustration uh, for that. Um, for me personally, I'm okay with it. I just wait for the bundles. Uh, 60 Prestige Totalizer is also a bot release event. Yes, uh, th that that's probably the second most uh, common way of releasing a bot. And what a lot of people may not realize, there was actually an one individual Prestige event for a new bot release. That's all the way back with RC. There was a 60 Prestige event, and uh, I remember I was still early on like a lot of people, and uh, I only managed eight prestiges, so I got eight crystals for a chance at RC, and I got lucky enough. That, you know, I, I was saying it was Tiger Hawk before I got the four star, but I, but I forgot about way back there when the RC out of eight crystals. I think it was the seventh one I actually pulled, or not? No, this is the last one. I, I got eight crystals, and on the eighth one, I actually pulled the four star RC. That's my very first four star bot. Uh, so, but, but that was the only one that was released in an individual event. Every the bot since then has been alliance. So. Alright guys, it's been like an hour and a half now. And uh, I knew this was going to roll long. And that's totally cool because, man, we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I <laughs> do thank you guys for, for uh, sticking around. It, it's been a great time. It's been uh, good, good chatting with you and get your, getting your feedback. And um, if you got here late and you didn't see all the excitement about Unicron, uh, this will, this uh, replay will be up shortly. I'll also post the video separately to talk just about Unicron because, you know, everybody else did. <laughs> so, and uh, I will definitely be uh, looking into doing more of these unboxings as stuff comes in. So, they're going to be infrequent. Sometimes I'll go a couple months before we get them. Um, might even do some toy hauls if I manage to go pull. Like, I managed to grab a, uh, you know, I got Red Alert and Brunt uh, the other day. Uh, didn't find any refractors, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll throw some of that stuff in there. And I do want to get back to reviews. I'm still just trying to figure out the, uh, a way to do it in a manner that I uh, will feel proud putting it out. Because that's, that's, that's really kind of the hold up. Is, is sure, I could do it, but I want to make sure it looks good and uh, meets my standards. Alright, enough, enough yakking. Thank you guys for coming. I'm Engineer Hoist. Keep rolling, my friends. See you next time.